law who saw Gail in our hygiene department and they went over an initial screening for the possibilities that Panah has sleep apnea. He had a lot of signs and symptoms that are really red flags for us, for our patients who we may, who are having problems sleeping at night. They find that they're tired during the day, that they may snore a lot. So we brought him back in today. We're doing a couple more screening tests just to see if he's really having a problem. We're going to test that, his airways see what his nasal airway is like, see if there's any kind of problems in there, any obstructions that could be causing him to have problems sleeping at night. And then we're also going to do another test that's going to test the ability of his airway to collapse when he's laying back and his tongue falls back in the back of his throat. And just give us a more of a, a scale to find out if we need to go further in the research to see if Panaz actually having some kind of sleep apnea problems. So we brought him back in today for another screening. We're just gonna test to see if his nasal airway and his oral airway is, good, is significant enough problems so that we should test him further for sleep apnea. But now, now we're gonna use the acoustic rhinometer. Like I said, this doesn't hurt. All it's gonna do is use sound waves to measure the size of your nasal passage, okay? You're gonna hear a little clicking sound. I just want you to breathe normally. And then in a minute, I'm gonna have you pause your breathing for me, okay? Okay, pause your breathing for me. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. You doing okay? Mm-hmm. Good. Okay, exact same thing. Just breathe normally for me. Now pause your breathing for me. Good. Very good, good job. Panada, the second test that we're gonna do, we're gonna use an acoustic pharyngometer. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna check your oral airway, see if there are any blockages are in there. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you put this in, in your mouth. You're actually gonna put this part here under your tongue and you're gonna bite here. And then this part, you have to put your lips around this part. So we're gonna put this in now. For the first time that we're gonna do it, you're just gonna breathe normally, okay? I'm gonna have you hold your nose and I'll tell you when to do that, okay? Open for me. And get close all the way around it. Okay, now I wanted you to take this arm for me and just pinch your nose for me. Good. Now just breathe normally. Okay, open for me. Good. You can stop on your nose. Everything, you feel okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, now we're going to do that one more time. And this time I'm gonna have you breathe normally for me. And then when I tell you, I'm gonna have you take a breath in, and then I'm gonna have you slowly exhale until all the air goes out, okay? When you get to where you feel like you don't have any air out, you can just tap me, and then we'll stop, okay? Okay, okay I'm gonna put this back in one more time. Good. Hold your nose for me, perfect. Okay. And just breathe normally. Now take a deep breath in for me. And now slowly exhale all the air. Just keep exhaling until you don't have any air left. Good. Keep going. Good. Good. One for me. You did good. You feel okay? Yeah. Good. You've seen just previously that uh, Panna had gone through a questionnaire in hygiene with the hygienist, which led us to believe there's, possible, there's a possibility of him suffering from collapsibility of his airway, possibly symptoms that would lead us to believe that he has sleep apnea, a life-threatening life illness, something that we really do want to address and something that we can detect. So one of the first things that we put Pana through is a simple study, a simple test that would lead us to believe whether or not the stability of his airway. If you're taking a look at the screen here, what we've done is we've taken him through a pharyngometer test, two of them. One to evaluate the size of his airway, what you see in the green and the green lines. And then the second, the purple graph here, to see the stability of his airway, the collapsibility of his airway. The first one is done through normal breathing, just when he breathes through the pharyngometer. The second one is done when he takes a breath and then he breathes out to show the stability of his airway through that movement. And what we want to see is whether or not his 
airway that he has is something that is collapsible and if he's losing a lot of volume of his airway when he actually is breathing it, certainly at nighttime. And what you'll see when we overlap the two images, the green and the purple, the two sets of, of uh, exams that we just put him through, you can see that there's a serious issue here in terms of the collapsibility of his airway. If you see from the green line, this is the size of his airway. If you see from the purple line how much has been lost during the collapsibility study, he's lost as much as 70%, 71% of his airway during that second study. That would lead us to believe that there's very significant instability of his airway during his breathing cycles. And this is something that would want us or lead us to put him through a nighttime study where we would evaluate this breathing during his sleep cycle at night. And we put him through that through an embolata uh, test where we would set him up with a take home appliance that he would put on, strap on in the evening before he goes to bed and then come back the next day Pana, with that device and we'd be able to get the readings from that device on the computer and then submit that study for evaluation for sleep disorder to get a, a significant and differential diagnosis on his sleep apnea.